Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday. Thank you once again for spending just a little bit of it with me. I wrote a blog post last week uh, called Bikes Can't Save the World. Bit of a clickbait title, I'll admit. Um, And as sometimes happens, you know, I click publish on these things and then I realize that I didn't really get all of it out. So I want to uh, expound just a little bit. When I first started working in the bike business, there really wasn't anyone talking about advocacy or trails, uh, really, at least in this town, save for one person. And if I'm honest, we all thought he was kind of nuts. Indianapolis was uh, essentially a small city that encompassed a very large swath of land. So everything was really spread out. And quite honestly, it was pretty easy to ride a bike in Indianapolis. I mean, anywhere you wanted, nearly. And on top of that, no one was really using a bike for transportation. It was mostly just um, guys like me in their 20s pretending to be, in my case, pretending to be a racer and some people that were actually racing. The best ideas... I've ever had, the greatest ideas I've ever had, or at the least ideas that had the potential to be great, all came to me while I was either walking, running, or riding my bike. The days that I ride to work Those two rides are, in a lot of cases, the best parts of my day. Walking, riding, or, you know, using a bike for transportation, moving under your own power. What I've realized, I think a little late to the game, is it's not what it's doing for my body, for my health, but it's what it's doing for my mind. It gives you, you know, 15 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour to just clear your head. So why would I say bikes can't save the world? Well, I think had, at least in the case of Indianapolis, and that's, you know, kind of what I'm talking about because I have to, because that's the the area that, that I'm, that I've lived in for the last, I don't know, God, 25 or 30 years. If they had started building infrastructure in the late 80s, early 90s, I think it would have been possible. By then, seeing bikes on the road would have been commonplace. And the connectivity would have been there so that you could use trails to get nearly anywhere you wanted to go. I think Minneapolis is probably a good example of that. But they didn't. And... Like in a lot of other cities, the population of Indianapolis has grown uh, seemingly a staggering amount. So now, all you know, at least this town, from my perspective, is constantly trying to play catch up with the, you know, building trails, but the number of people coming into the city 
and the number of cars on the road, there's just no way they can get ahead of it. The other reason, I, I don't think you really have to guess. Um, the cell phone, our decreased attention span, our general lack of consideration for anyone else, um, and the fact that there's no real repercussions to killing a cyclist or a pedestrian. Um, nearly 900 cyclists killed in 2019 alone. You know, that's going to put a lot of people off. I mean, I've been riding on the streets in this town since nearly the day I moved here. And I was never afraid. And when people would tell me they were afraid, I would try to, you know, assuage those fears. And I can't do that anymore. Something changed. Um, five years ago, maybe, where things on the road got different in not a good way. And we have, you know, a three-foot passing law, which I'd be willing to bet you most people driving cars don't know about. We have a hands-free law now, but no real way to enforce it. And like I said, you know, there are no penalties. If you hit a cyclist with your car and you stay on the scene and you're not drunk, chances are nothing's going to happen to you. Interactions with motor vehicles. It's precious. Interactions. So I don't know really how anyone can expect bikes to save the world. I understand the benefits. I've experienced the benefits. Likely you have as well. But until there is accommodation for cyclists and pedestrians on our streets that we pay tax dollars for, I mean, let's be honest, I'm sure I own a car. I'm sure most of you do, too. Um, you know, I can't see... How are you going to get somebody new and convince them that, you know, that two miles to the grocery store, you know, you should ride a bike? That five miles, eight miles, ten miles to work, you should ride a bike? I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know the answer. I, the thing that I do know is, like I say many times, now is the time to support your local advocacy groups. Now is the time to really pay attention to who you're voting for at the local level. Much more important. Those city county councilmen, the mayor, your governor, those people have much more impact on your life. Kind of a downer message today. Um, but I needed to exercise the demon. I hope you're doing great. Um, if you're watching or listening on Monday morning, I thank you. Uh, let's, mo yeah. let's make the most of this day. Until next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon.